I'm going to do a quick demonstration of our lesson today for lesson two, adding layers to your music. And I know this can be a little bit confusing, so I'm just going to go step by step, and I encourage you to watch the whole thing, and then try it on your own and use this as your guide. The first thing we're going to do is add some variables here in the section called Sound Bank Variables. You see it starts on line 17 with a comment. So let me scroll a little bit so you can see it good and centered here. And underneath the comment, I'm going to add in some variables. We have experience with variables before. Remember, it's descriptive, it's all lowercase, and then we're going to use the equal sign to assign it a value. The value is going to be one of these media clips. So we're going to be at layering some instrumentals to be our intro. I'm going to click here on instruments and I can just do a kind of a, a filter for any of them. Let's say I want to start with a keyboard. You could start with any of them. I'm just going to pick keyboard and I'm just going to look through some and see if I can find one that I might like. So I can play the clips. And to me that sounds pretty good. I like the, the, the rhythm of it and everything. So this is the one that I would like. I'm going to give, since this is a piano, I'm going to name my variable piano. So I'm going to click here underneath the comment sound bank variables. I'm going to type the word piano. That's my variable name equals. And then I'm going to click on the blue icon to assign it the value of that media clip. Now using a variable is going to help us out because if I decide to change this piano piece to a different clip, I can just change it right here and it will be affected throughout the rest of my code. The other thing I can do is use this clip over and over again without having to type that whole long thing or you know finding it again. So now I found it one time, I assign it to a variable, I can use it as often as I like or very easily I can change it. I'm going to find one more clip right now and then I'm going to start building my program. I might want to add some kind of a percussion to it, so I'm going to click on, I unclicked on the um, keyboard, and I'm going to click on drums now, and let's see if I can find some kind of beat that I like, and um, I'm just going to kind of look around, you can take your time to do all of this. I might try some kind of a snare roll or something. Oh, let's see what the dusty percussions are. All right, so I think this funky beat is pretty good. I like that one too. I'm going to go ahead with the second one. So I might just call this one hip hop or I might call it funk beat. I can use any kind of variable name like that. I'm going to click underneath piano. I'm going to type the name of my second variable with an equals. And I'm going to click on that little blue icon to paste the value into this variable. Now with just two sound clips, I'm going to go ahead and start my intro function and call it. And then I'm going to build on it as I go. So right below the sound bank variables, you see a comment called intro. And this is where I'm going to build my intro. I'm going to use a function because I just like how uh, we can create functions and move them around and um, I think it's just easier to build our program with functions and just a whole bunch of lines of code that you have to sift through whenever you want to make a change. So we're going to create a function using the word def. It turns pink because it's a keyword just like print. Def is short for define or define definition. I'm defining a function and I'm going to call it intro. I'm in the intro section. I have to do a set of parentheses and at the end, so at the very end of the line, I add a colon. So that, that lets the computer know I'm defining a function. So the word def and the colon, those are really key. Then I'm not going to just move my mouse, but I'm going to press enter and notice how my cursor is indented a little bit. Indenting is really important in Python. It lets the computer know that everything indented is inside that function. Now I'm just going to do two fit medias here. Instead of putting it against the edge like we have before, I'm going to embed these fit media into this function. So I type the word fit media, remember to capitalize the M, and then instead of the actual clip, 
I use the variable name. So my first one is piano. I'm going to start it at track one. I'm going to start it on measure one and I'm going to go to measure nine. So it's going to be eight measures long. And we're going to start with all of them being one to nine. And then as you go, you can manipulate the numbers, maybe starting them later or ending them earlier, anything like that. But let's start with all of them going one to nine. Then I'm going to put in a second fit media with my second clip, which is funk beat. And I'm going to go to track two, but then still start it on one and nine. So I've got my two variables. I've got my function with two fit media and I go to run it. And you might notice that nothing happens. That's because I have to call the function. So we have one final step. I'm going to come here near the end. It has to be above finish, but it shouldn't be too high up. So I have a print statement that's the end of my script. I'm going to go just above the print statement. So for me, that's line 33. It might be a different number for you, but it should be just above the print statement. And I'm going to call the function by typing the name only. So I don't put in the word def. I don't use the colon. I simply type the name of my function, which is intro. So you can see that right here. So on line 22, I define the function. And on line 33, I am calling the function. So now I'm going to click run again. And now I see my beats show up and I'm going to play them. And I'm liking that pretty good. If I didn't like it, I could erase the value of one of these two. I could pick a different clip and still use the same variable name and just give it a different value. But I'm liking those two pretty good, so I'm going to add my third variable. Maybe I want um, some kind of brass. So I'm going to come back up here to my filters. I'm going to select brass, which is, well, where is brass? Uh, well, I'll just pick something, and I'm sure sooner or later, brass will show up. I'll go to strings and let's see what happens. Maybe we want some kind of a cinematic string. That's pretty dramatic. different I kind of like it so I'll call this variable strings equals and then I click on the blue icon now I have a third variable I'm going to come to my function and I'm going to add a third fit media I'm going to use strings comma track three comma starting at one and ending at nine let's try running this I'm just going to add one variable and one fit media at a time run it, see how I like it. And I'm going to have to move my red line kind of back to the beginning. Okay, those strings don't really quite go, do they? So I might want to pick a different um, something else there. Let's see. That's kind of dramatic. I don't know if I'll like it, but I can just delete this one. I can leave the name strings and let me try this. And instead of starting at one, because it's pretty dramatic, maybe I started at five, a little bit into it. So I'm going to move my red line back. I'm going to click run. And let's see. Oh, and somehow it's got caught in a little loop. Still getting into all this. Oh, stop. I wanted to do the whole thing, so let me see if I can drag everything back. I don't know why it doesn't always get cleared. I don't want you to stop anywhere. Anywhere. Nowhere. Okay, let's see if we get it now. Okay, so I don't know that I really like that one either, but you can see I could 
still keep the same variable and try a different uh, value. Then I'm going to add a fourth variable and add a fourth fit media and then a fifth one. So you need to have at least five layers and you can, you know, you should play it as you go and see if you like it and make adjustments. I probably still change this string one because that didn't seem to fit either, but I'll find something that does fit and then I'll move on to my fourth variable, then I'll move on to my fifth. And that's the kind of thing that we're working on for this lesson two layers.